All right. Uh, for folks who don't know, my name's Theo. Uh, been in part of the Catholic Worker Movement since 2010, actually, and I, and I reached out to my friend Lincoln Rice here a couple weeks ago because I really wanted to talk about some of the easy essays in the book he edited. Uh, Peter Morin, The Forgotten Radical, um, and he was kind enough to do that with me. Uh, yeah, so we each picked out a few essays here and uh, thought we would just give some thoughts on it. What, it. what was Peter talking about? Does it still make sense for today? How does it make sense today? Um, yeah, so let's jump right in. Uh, this first one, the very first easy essay, published in May of 1933, Lincoln picked this one out, Institutions and Corporation. Do you want to read this one for us, Lincoln? Sure, and I'll just, yeah, add in there, uh, yeah, Lincoln Rice uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, been an associate, part of the Milwaukee Catholic worker, Casa Maria, since uh, 1998, and uh, yeah, maybe just as a brief introduction, uh, while I was working on some other research, it occurred to me, boy, it would be great if there's a book that had every single essay that Peter wrote, published and unpublished. <laughs> I happen to be lucky enough to be in Milwaukee, which houses the Catholic Worker Archives at Marquette University. So every time I wanted to look up uh, an unpublished essay or like one, even one that was in the newspaper, but not like published in one of the previous book collections, I could just go down to the archives or even see an unpublished one. So that's how this book ended up happening. So I'm like, especially if I didn't live in Milwaukee or even if I do, I don't wanna have to go down to the library every single time I wanna look up an essay. And I thought it might be nice to have some notes and other explanatory stuff. And so anyways, that's where all that came out of as way of introduction. But uh, I thought it'd be nice to look at the first essay which I think kind of kicks off the tone of uh, everything else that Peter wants to do. So I'm gonna share my screen so everyone can see it together. It, this is from my proofs for the book. So it's the digitized version, um, but that way we can all see it. So this one is called Institutions-Corporations. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll read it and then <laughs> Theo and I will discuss. Jean-Jacques Rousseau says, man is naturally good, but institutions make him bad. So let us overthrow institutions. I say, man is naturally bad, but corporations, not institutions, make him worse. An institution, says Emerson, is the extension of the soul of man. When institutions are no longer the extension of the soul of the founder, they have become corporations. Institutions are founded to foster the welfare of the masses. Corporations are organized to promote the wealth of the classes. And uh, down here in the footnote, it states that here, so in the book here, the main essay is the original essay from the very first issue of the paper. But when Peter reprinted it a few other times, and then when it was collected in other book editions, he changed it, <laughs> changed one line. And the line that he changed was, instead of, he initially says, I say man is naturally bad. Uh, he changed that to man, um, I say man is naturally bad to man is partly good and partly bad. And now I'm realizing I missed stanza seven. <laughs> There's one other stanza on the next page. So corporations are organized to promote the wealth of the classes. So the question is not to organize bigger corporations, but to found better institutions. So I, I can start off with what, since I'm the one that chose it for our conversation today, um, I thought his, his first essay 
I think a lot of folks, you know, the, the, if you're going to put together a collection of essays, a collection of poems, or here Peter's putting together his first collection of essays for the first issue of The Catholic Worker, this essay must mean something. <laughs> it must be of prime importance because he had a bunch of essays to choose from that he's slowly putting in the paper. Uh, but I, he doesn't come out and say it straight out in this issue of the newspaper, the first issue, but as the issues continue, it's clear that he views the Catholic worker as an institution, uh, which I think- Controversial. Many of, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think many of us in the Catholic worker would be like, no, no, we're not an institution. We're like a movement or an organism or, you know, it's, um, but I think what we often think of as an institution, he would say, no, no, if Peter was here, I think he'd say, you're talking about a corporation. <laughs> if, I think, he would view uh, an institution as closer to being more organic and an extension of the founder and something that was more alive with the spirit and soul of the people. And, um, and yeah, so as the essays continue, it becomes clear that the Catholic worker is the institution that he has in mind that can help people be better um, in our society that makes it so easy for people to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, in a conversation with Brian Terrell, he used the uh, what is an institution. He he suggested um, baseball, the institution of baseball. There's like the origins of people playing a game in their yard, and that's like the American pastime or something like that. And baseball as an American institution compared to like major league baseball like a giant corporation that exists not for not even for baseball necessarily but as a profit making entity I, and i thought that was maybe a uh, helpful thought about what do we mean by the word institution kind of thing you know like the baseball in your backyard or at least with peter that might be like your family has an institutional practice of playing baseball once a year during some family reunion. But uh, once you're heading over to, I don't know what the stadium for the Dodgers is called, but uh, you know, you Dodger. the <laughs> Dodger Stadium, <laughs> you know that you're within the confines of a corporation. It's quite clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly, there's the conversation, is the CW an institution or not? What reading in preparation for this conversation, I, I was kind of thought struck by the line of uh, when institutions are no longer the extension of the soul of the founder, they have become corporations. And and I, I was thinking about that one in terms of uh, Peter early on like stepped away from the paper right and was like I I'm not an editor uh I'll take credit for my words but do not want you to be associating with, with me so I was immediately struck by like huh like how Peter Dorothy says is like the primary founder kind of you could say uh pretty early on was starting to disassociate himself later she writes you know uh, looking at the soup line, she asked Peter, is this what you envisioned? And he says, well, at least it, uh, you know, raises the consciousness or something like that. Uh, he never like really avows that formation of the Catholic worker as uh, what he envisioned as the institution. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think Peter, um, I mean, I think early on, like in so the first paper is in May of 33. In I believe it's in the October issue. That's where they know that the bishops are going to be meeting for their yearly meeting. And it's clear from his essays from that month that his program for a Catholic worker institution, his three-point program of uh, clarification of thought, houses of hospitality, and the farming communes, he's hoping the bishops will take that on. <laughs> And so in the first couple of years of the Catholic worker, you'll often see him use the word Catholic action, which was this thought of the hierarchy directing the laity in a transformation of the world. And 
after the first year or two, the word Catholic action disappears. His letters to the, like there's no more letters to the bishops when they're meeting for their conferences. I think he, real, he realized and Dorothy Day realized like this is something we're doing on our own. Um, and it's, you know, Dorothy starts the first hospita house of hospitality in December, you know, basically a month, month and a half after the bishops meet and they realize nothing is happening and it's a cold winter. And, you know, so for most of that first year, they're thinking the bishops are, will help, will be so inspired by what they're writing that this will be a catch on fire <laughs> and it doesn't. Um, yeah, and I think, so I think that part of Peter's vision or kind of falls to the wayside and then he shifts gears. And I think he hoped that the farming communes would be a much bigger piece of the movement. I, I, I have a feeling that he would have been, he was perhaps dissatisfied that the houses of hospitality became the main aspect of the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that, that's interesting. You mentioned that they're directing this kind of at the institutional church because one of the other thoughts I had is the mm -hmm. corporatization of the institutional Catholic church. And similarly, uh, I, I even go so far, and I know I'm not the only Catholic worker who would suggest this, uh, that, uh, you know, speaking of moving away from the intentions of the founder of an institution, how far has the Catholic Church, you know, moved away from the intentions of the founder of it, you know, AKA Jesus, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that the Catholic worker, you know, as, along with other movements throughout history is, uh, you know, trying to hearken back to the founder vision of Jesus, you know, presented in the gospel. Yeah, that is definitely, both Peter and Dorothy's relationship to the Catholic Church is complicated. <laughs> and Peter never, he definitely has critiques of the Catholic Church and has a vision of where it should be going, but we don't see him applying the same logic that he uses in this first essay. Does he view the Catholic work as a, the Catholic Church as a corporation or, you know, are some of its failings because it's taken on some of the trappings? Uh, it would have been interesting to hear his thoughts on how he walked this line between what I'm sure he believed as an institution founded by Christ, but one that has oftentimes, ta oftentimes taken on the trappings of what he defined as a corporation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do, don't we know, doesn't Dorothy say that she like, tones down some of his critiques of the bishops at, at some point. Do we have like those, are those in this book? Do we have, the, do those exist somewhere? You know, that's, uh, there, that's a, a statement from Mel Peel's um, work on the Catholic worker, Breaking Bread. Oh, okay. And he states that, but, I don't know how true that was. I've not, at least the archives at Marquette, you know, they don't have, they haven't been obviously able to save everything that Peter wrote in every rendition, uh, but there doesn't appear to be anything obvious in his original written essays where you're like, oh wait, they changed that part. He was like critiquing this bishop or, so I'm not, you know, I, I don't know, because there are other things. I mean, I think Mel Peel's book is wonderful. I love it. It's like he did, a, you know, the first major, the first major research on the early Catholic worker and shared that story and was interviewing people. And, but he also, well, at times that book states stuff like, to the effect that Dorothy was appointing people to be in charge of other Catholic worker houses as they started in the 30s. And to the best of my knowledge, that was not the case. <laughs> like other Catholic worker houses started kind of like they do today and whoever their, you know, core people were, or was it like one founder or two founders, or was it a group of five and they kind of worked organically. But there are some statements in there that I wonder if someone happened to say something to Mel and 
he took it as gospel truth where it might have just been a person's understanding and it, it made it into the book as kind of a statement of fact. I guess that's part of our uh, problem as an anti-institutional organization or whatever. Uh, we don't have, you know, sometimes these oral histories or traditions are uh, may or may not be accurate, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, I guess the other thing, the reason I wanted to share the change that happened that Peter made with the sentence that, uh, and obviously, it, I guess it should be clear already uh, <laughs> that Peter is, as a, especially a man of the 30s, but an American of the 30s using the English language is not using inclusive language. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, he states, man, I believe man is naturally bad, which later gets changed. To, I believe man is partly good, partly bad. Why he made the change, I don't know. Maybe he felt he was too harsh or maybe someone critiqued him for it. And I mean, he wasn't someone to change his mind lightly. But, <laughs> but I think the, the overall thing or point that I, I take away from this is that it goes along with what we've often heard about Peter and the Catholic worker is that, and, and, you know, Dorothy says this too, that with the Catholic worker, we want to create a world where it's easier for people to be good. And I do think that's just bleeds through this essay. <laughs> like if we have the right institutions, like he would say, like the Catholic worker, uh, we're giving people an opportunity to be better. Uh, and he'd say, depending on which version either whether man is whether people are naturally bad or partly good and partly bad and then corporations make them worse like there's so much to push people in the wrong direction and he wants to start off this essay by saying we need to start putting in mechanisms that'll help people be the best that they can be mm -hmm. 